Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Cormandy from the Airgun Channel, My Airgun Reviews, and today we're going to review another pellet rifle from Crossman. This is the Crossman Shockwave in .22 caliber. It is a nitro piston powered uh, pellet rifle. It's using Crossman's first generation uh, nitro piston with uh, their original gear and it comes with a 4x32 scope. This gun sells mostly $99.99 to $124.99 except for Crossman themselves it's $149.99. It's rated at 950 feet per second shooting alloy pellets and 800 feet per second shooting lead pellets and uh, the, they also make it in a 177 version which is rated at 1200 feet per second with alloy and 1000 feet per second using lead pellets. Let's start out by taking a close up of this uh, air gun. Here you can see it just uh, has a uh, front fiber optic sight uh, pressed onto the steel barrel and nice blowing on the barrel. It's solid steel. Uh, rear sight is micro click adjustable for elevation and windage. You can see it has their traditional nitro piston. It's got the newest generation composite stock pretty much the same as the uh, red tail and the crossing crusher and a couple others I've reviewed. Uh, like I say, it's still got their new gen or the older generation trigger and a fairly nice uh, shape stock with a fairly stiff rubber butt pad. And it also has dovetail mount and it does have a hole for uh, a scope stop pin. Okay, as I mentioned, the trigger on this gun is their original trigger. One thing I have noticed over the past several Crossman pellet rifles that I've reviewed uh, that use the old style trigger is they are getting smoother. Uh, on the Crossman Red Tail I actually use the trigger in its original configuration. I just run the adjusting screw all the way in to make it as short as I could and it made the gun usable. Uh, this particular gun, the trigger seemed a little bit longer, and I did find my 3 to 10 millimeter trigger adjusting screws. So, all I did is uh, flip the gun upside down and through a hole right here. You can uh, run that adjusting screw out and install your uh, 10 mil millimeter long uh, adjusting screw and turn it in until you've got the uh, proper length on the trigger. And, it made the trigger uh, pretty usable on this gun. The second stage is a little stiffer uh, than I would like, but it was very usable. And it uh, has a dovetail scope mount with the uh, uh, scope stop screw uh, end and for it. And uh, this uh, new style stock that they have, uh, I for the most part like it. I uh, just think it's a little thin right in here. Uh, the gun is basically uh, the last several guns I've reviewed from Crossman. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, this one has the same barrel as the like a Crossman Vantage. Uh, the difference between the two guns is uh, wood stock versus uh, this composite stock. And, uh, the stock on this one is the same as on the Crossman Red Tail and the Crossman Crusher, which was also a 22 caliber. And uh, with the fiber optic sights, you do not have the shrouded barrel, and you do get a couple of decibels. I'd say somewhere between three and five more decibels uh, louder than one with a uh, shrouded barrel or a silencer like the Red Tail had, but. Uh, if you like the composite stock and you like the uh, fiber optic sights and shooting without a scope, uh, 
this gun is a good deal. Uh, this gun sells for many places at $99.99 up to $124.99. And uh, right now, I guess for the next month or two, there is a $20 mail-in rebate from Crossman that you can get. Uh, the gun overall weighs 6 pounds. Uh, I saw I advertised 15 inch rifle steel barrel. This has got an 18 and a half inch rifle steel barrel. Overall gun length is 43 and a half inches. They claim 36 pounds of cocking effort. Uh, I measured this one several times at different points through the cocking stage and it ranged from 29 and a half pounds of uh, cocking effort up to 34 and a half pounds of cocking effort. So the gun's reasonably easy to cock and uh, it's rated at 950 feet per second shooting 22 caliber alloy pellets and 800 feet per second shooting uh, lead pellets. This one came in shooting a Crossman SSP 9.5 ring. Came in at 940.4 feet per second so less than 10 feet per second off the claim and that pellet generated 18.26 foot-pounds of muzzle energy on average. Shooting the Ardoyos Hobby lead pellet, 11.9 grain, we had a high of 779.9 feet per second, and uh, extreme spread of only 3.99 feet per second, but that only generated 16 foot-pounds muzzle energy. So it was uh, about 20 foot or 20 feet per second slower than the claim, but uh, with the heavier uh, hunting pellets, the gun did very good. Uh, with the Benjamin Destroyer 14.3 grain 22 caliber pellet, which you can buy at most Walmarts now, uh, it had a high of 762.5 feet per second, a very high extreme spread of 35.93. Uh, standard deviation 14.69, but that generated an average of 18 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Shooting the uh, H&N Hornet 16 grain, we topped out at 709.3 feet per second, only a 5.77 foot per second extreme spread, standard deviation 2.44, uh, 17.22 foot-pounds of muzzle energy which is decent. And the h and Chrome Magnum 18.21 grain topped out at 654 feet per second, 9.37 foot per second extreme spread, and uh, muzzle energy averaged 17.1 foot-pounds muzzle energy. So this gun is a good uh, critter getter. Uh, I'd, I'd say you can uh, take on rabbits and squirrels at 35 yards uh, very easily with this gun. Uh, the scope that came with it, uh, it would have been, it was usable at 10, 12 yards. At 20 yards, you start getting that wormhole effect. You know, we're all the way around the edge of the lens. It was blurry. Uh, you could still see the sight objective and you know line up the crosshairs, but rather than doing that, I just put my uh, center point three to nine by forty AO scope on this one, and uh, that scope did a good job. Uh, I think it gave me uh, a much better uh, accuracy test. Uh, and as far as accuracy goes, I there were several pellets that did real good, you know, twelve yards. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, three, I did not record the 12 yard accuracy test, but I'm going to show you the shot patterns for those, for three different pellets at 12 yards. So here's that. Okay, here's our five shot group shooting the H&N Hornets, 12 yards, covered up with a dime completely. And here's our five shot group shooting the H&N Crow Magnum. And as you can see, it's much smaller than dime. And I thought this one was notable too. This is the 
Benjamin Destroyer, 14.3 uh, grain. They were also pretty good at 12 yards. You know, for the 20-yard uh, outdoor accuracy test, I actually had a pretty decent day to do it, and it, they just kind of totally fell apart. Uh, set everything up, started recording, and uh, did uh, five shots with the uh, H&N Hornet 16 grain and five shots with the H&N Chrome Magnum 18.21 uh, grain. Actually, seven shots with that because I messed up on two shots, so I shot two more. And so the the five good shots were all, you know, the size of a quarter. And the H&M Hornet, uh, that was shot pattern was the size of a dime. But when I uh, once stopped the camera, it was already off. The battery had died. So I brought it in, hooked it to the computer, downloaded the video, and checked it, and it only caught three shots. So it took me a while to find my replacement batteries for the camera. Got them in there and got a couple of shoot and see paste-ons and put them on the target. Then went to redo the accuracy test. This whole time the gun sat outside in the cool and it was, you know, like low 40s. And uh, when I went to record the accuracy test again, the gun was shooting all over the place. You know, the gun at room temperature just going outside was uh, sharp as a tack for uh, accuracy. Once it cooled down, it was shooting all over the place. So I did not get that 20 yard accuracy test on camera, but here I'm going to show you the shot patterns. Uh, on the left is the H&N Hornet, about a dime pattern. The right side is the uh, H&N Chrome Magnum. Uh, that's actually a seven shot group because I dr dropped one down low. I, you know, I, I could see I was way off target when I pulled the trigger. And the other one was wide right, but the, the five meant for the target uh, was the size of a nickel. Okay, now here is what the shot pattern looked like after the gun cooled off. Now you can see that is a drastic change, which is going to have me do another video on whether your air gun is going to lose accuracy in cold weather. I'm going to take two different rifles. Uh, I think I'm going to use the uh, this one right here and I'm also going to use the Ruger Impact Max. They're both gas piston uh, 22 calibers in the same power range and uh, by two different manufacturers and we'll do a uh, test where I just bring the rifles outside while they're still warm, do the accuracy test, and then let them sit out for like half an hour to an hour, maybe temperature in the mid 30s, and uh, you know, see what the accuracy looks like again, you know, with the gun cool down to outdoor temperatures. So, uh, stay tuned for that video, which should be coming up not too long distant future but anyway back to this gun I like it I'm not real fond of this thin part of the stock but overall the rifles got a uh, good shape to it comfortable to shoot uh, the, the guns cheap enough at $99 where you can go out and buy yourself a better scope and put on there if uh, yours doesn't work too well and like I say uh, for pennies, you can replace the trigger and make yourself trigger a good one. Uh, so there's really, you know, quite a few rifles in this class that you can choose from. If you like the the open sights and the composite stock, this is a very good choice. If you like the open sights and a wood stock, then you would want to maybe look at a Crossman Vantage. You know, they're still both very much in the same uh, price range and same in uh, power. And if you like uh, the gun with the silencer on it, uh, you've got the red tail. And if you just like to use the uh, shrouded barrel, 
you got the Crossman Crusher. So there are several guns in this class. So if you like the composite stock and the open sights, this is a gun you're going to want to choose. Uh, it's uh, real accurate. Uh, yeah, 20 yards when I first brought it out, you know, it, the accuracy was excellent. At 12 yards indoors, it's a tack driver. And uh, you know, it's a $99 gun, and like I say, right now you can also get a $20 mail-in rebate, making it very affordable. And uh, my overall view of the gun is it's a very good gun for the money. The triggers are a little bit smoother now. You can uh, use it out of the box. It's a very long pull. You can run that justing screw in all the way and shorten pull up some. And for a few more pennies, uh, replace that adjusting screw and have yourself a real good trigger. Uh, anyway, that is my review of the Crossman Shockwave 22 caliber. My name is Kenny Cormandy, and thank you for watching.